My mother hinted at it, but never asked me directly. And after making this video, I am going to be living on the run for fear of our government. Because they're going to try and hunt me down so I can't disclose any more to anybody. That is why I intend to tell you everything in this video that I can remember. I'm old. The public needs to know this. Some of the most amazing discoveries and achievements of mankind are being hidden from you. That is not right. My story starts as a kid. I grew up in a small town in southern Nevada. My dad was an aerospace engineer. I remember he always worked late hours. He could never tell us what he did for a job. My mom always told me not to ask him about it. He taught me to fly at an early age. I was a licensed pilot at 15. And when I got old enough, I went into the Marine Corps as a pilot. One thing led to another, and soon I was considered one of the top pilots in the Marines. At the time, I was 28 years old and was thinking about leaving the Marine Corps. Maybe finding a job back home, starting a family, that is, until I received the letter. I remember it said, classified, eyes only, on the envelope. And the only name on it was mine, Robert Miller. I opened the letter in private. It said that I was qualified for a top secret position as a test pilot at Groom Lake Test Facility. I thought, great. It also said a plane would be picking me up in Las Vegas Airport private section at 3 a.m. to take me there. So we flew out there in the middle of the night and two men in black suits escorted me into an underground building that was built in kind of like a side of a hill. And yes, the men in black are real. Believe me, they're real. I remember going down long hallways with many doors on each side. We went down several flights of stairs. Must have been far underground at that point. They showed me into a small room with a single bed and a desk. Then they told me this is where I was going to be living for the next two months. Inside the room, there was a small bed, a desk, and some weights for exercising. Before giving me the chance to even say no, the men left and locked the door. You can't object to these people. You have to comply no matter what. I looked inside one of the drawers in the desk and there was a booklet titled something like Working at Groom Lake or something. I sat down on the bed and began to read it. It mentioned that there were 1,200 other employees working on the top secret base and the public didn't know it existed. Good. It stated that the base also went by the name Area 51. It said the only way to get a job at Area 51 was to be invited by an insider. I assumed that my father invited me and this is where he'd been working when I was a kid. He had long, long, long since retired by the time I got there and I wasn't sure what was in store for me now. About an hour later, the men wearing the black suits opened the door, told me to come with them. I remember the halls were like long metallic tubes, very dim. They brought me up a couple flights of stairs and brought me to another room. They told me to sit down across the mat at a table, and they continued to explain why I was there. They told me I was going to be a test pilot for a new technology. This technology was not developed by humans, they explained, that they had discovered remnants of a craft in 1947. I ring a bell, and they had reverse engineered it. I was going to be the first one to pilot it. Also, they threatened me again. If I told anybody, even my family, there would be dire consequences for all. I asked them what were the origins of the craft they found, and if they really thought it was just from another country. They told me not of this world, and the beings that engineered it were extra dimensional. They said the beings were still alive and were being kept in an undisclosed location on a facility. My first test flight was going to be tomorrow. I woke up early the next day, awaiting further instructions. A man came to my door and took to a large cafeteria where 
where I eat breakfast, go to death bed. And got to know other people on the base. Each section of the base was highly compartmentalized. You only met with people who were doing similar jobs. I was then taken into a room which they were to fit me with the gear needed to pilot the craft, my flight suit. A team of scientists wearing white suits measured me, took many, many tests, then they left me in a room alone. About an hour, two. I couldn't tell there was no clocks or or lay in there. So anyway, I put on a suit and was escorted to a large warehouse. Then I saw it. It. In the middle of this warehouse was a large disc shaped craft. I would have estimated 50 feet from end to end, edge to edge. There was a transparent dome at the top, and I assumed that this is where I was going to pilot it. A few engineers came to me and began explaining how the craft worked. It was powered by an antimatter reactor. One engineer told me that the reactor produced bursts of intense energy that could actually generate wormholes and make the craft travel at near the speed of light. They then said that my test flight was going to be delayed until the next day because they had to explain to me everything I needed to know in order to be able to pilot this thing. Now, I'm just going off what I can remember. There was a lot of specifics, gauges and things. But as I've gotten older, so I'm telling you as much as I can possibly remember. I do remember they brought me inside the craft and up to the pilot seat. There was only room for one person in that giant craft. I looked around the cockpit and only saw a seat. No joystick, no steering wheel, no other controls, many odd looking gauges, but no controls. There was, however, a helmet that I was going to be putting on. They told me that the craft was controlled telepathically. The helmet measured my brain waves and was to control the craft by simply thinking about it. After a hard night of trying to sleep thinking about this, morning came, and it was finally time to take the craft for the first test flight. They brought it out under a tarp and ordered everyone working on the base to go inside. They wanted to keep everybody not knowing about this secret technology to a bare minimum. The only people outside that witnessed the test flight were a few scientists, engineers, air traffic controllers, and a tower. I was wearing the suit they'd given me, and after everybody was inside, they took the tarp off. And they told me it was time. There were a lot of cameras facing that aircraft. I climbed up the ladder alone, this time, to the cockpit, if you can call it that. I put on my helmet, plugged it in. I was given clearance by air traffic control, and it was time to take off. I was told to imagine the craft starting to float off the ground. But you know, it didn't work that way. Instead, I had to imagine that I was the craft, like part of it. And I began thinking of myself floating off the ground, and I felt vibrations from the antimatter reactor below me as it started to fire up. Within 10 seconds, the craft was off the ground, and I was flying. I looked around out of the dome and saw the people on the ground filming this historical event. I was instructed to take the altitude to a thousand feet and return to the ground. I kept descending and kept looking at the altimeter. Soon I was 500 feet off the ground. Then I felt the vibration of the engine stop. I glanced at the altimeter and realized that I was rapidly losing altitude. There was no ejection button or lever on this craft, so I was effectively helpless. I kept trying to imagine the craft floating, but it was plunging towards the ground. The reactor powered on at the last second, and I went unconscious. The next thing I knew, I was in a hospital bed. There were casts on my leg. Apparently, I was still at base in their medical unit. A man wearing a black suit came in a room to explain to me what had happened. He said right before the crash, his frown is just like, poof, disappeared. Nobody was 
sure what had happened. Everybody just went inside the base, call it a day. Then in the middle of the night, they heard a lot of cracking noise outside. Running out to see what happened, they saw the craft the crack in the spot it was about to crash several hours earlier during the day. I was inside the pilot seat, unconscious. Both my legs were shattered. The scientist had hypothesized that the craft had actually time traveled to a point in time several hours later. They said I was going to be going home soon because of medical discharge, because my legs were gone. They had me sign a non-disclosure, the third one, stating since the first meeting, I would not tell anybody as long as I live been making this video. Well, as you can see, I have gone against this NDA contract because I feel that the public needs to know about this. Mind you, they had this technology in the 1950s. Imagine what secret technology they might have right now. If anything happens to me within coming days, well, you're going to know why, I guess. The truth is more important than my safety right now, though. Please take this information and do whatever you please with it. I just want to get this story out there, because I've been living a lie for a long, long time. My sincere hope is that the story gets heard by as many people possible. Many of you are going to think I'm lying. But I'm not interested in talking to those people. I'm only speaking to those of you that will listen. I would love to hear any questions you may have. I will check in from time to time with Apex TV. Maybe your questions will spark my memory and help me remember any details I have forgotten. I would like to thank Apex TV for distributing my message and you for listening.